Today, if today were the last of all days, what would you be doing? Because it's the last day of the year. And it's the last today. It's the very final today. And that's why I say, you know, it always needs to be a party. I think life should always be a party, not a worrying about tomorrow. Not a time to fret. So many of us have been doing a lot of things that uh, we realized uh, we better get off the stick and do them while we still can. And it doesn't necessarily matter if we're terribly good at it or not. And a lot of us are finding out we're really good at a lot of things we were afraid we might not be so good at. That we might not be so confident. A lot of us have been taking more and more risks and trying things and, uh, and just uh, celebrating. Celebrating life in new ways. Celebrating God in new ways. I thought I'd do something here that, uh, you know, what the heck. <laughs> so it's New Year. <laughs> what? Yeah, I make messes. Happy New Year's, everybody. Do this in your sanctuary. <laughs> Uh, yes. You're welcome. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> John's here. <laughs> you look very pretty. You look very happy. Uh, I don't know if you are or not. <laughs> That's none of my business. <laughs> but let's keep it that way. Hi, <laughs> darling. So, happy last day, I called this talk. Happy last day. Because what choices are you going to make today? And I thought about relationships. With the people we know and the people we're making up. You know those people. The people you haven't met, but you have so many opinions about. <laughs> You know, the, the people you're praising, worshiping, criticizing, sending to hell, whatever. Uh, and, your, and your thoughts, your comments, your, you know, your, 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 everything that comes up. All that stuff making everybody up. But to uh, experience real forgiveness around all of this. Experience forgiveness for when we have been mistaken. To experience forgiveness on this last day. Yes. For thinking we knew when we didn't. For realizing we don't know about anything really or anybody. We know how we feel. We know what we like. But some of us like confetti, some of us don't. <laughs> I don't know much about confetti, but I know what I like. Uh, but to look at that, I want to read this. It comes out of the Holy Spirit's interpretation of the New Testament. And it comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 7, it starts with. And it says, forgiveness may not always seem easy. Anybody? <laughs> You will encounter great resistance in forgiving your brothers and sisters and in forgiving yourself. Do not let resistance alarm you. Resistance is fear. And to give in to resistance is to give in to fear. Remember, fear can, can keep you from me, meaning spirit. What that means is it keeps us from listening to the divine voice within, the divine voice of the comforter within. My fear makes me tell spirit what's going on instead of asking spirit what's going on. Fear makes me tell spirit what's up with my body rather than asking for a healing thought. Fear lets me tell spirit and God, it's just all the same, and lets me tell you guys what I think about them. And I'm always wrong when I tell you what I think about them. Always. I am always wrong when I tell you that I think I know what's up with them. 
So let's just make that assumption now. When we go to gossip with each other, when we go to tell stories about each other, we're going to be wrong in our story. As long as you know that, then you're just playing a game. And you can have fun. But if you think you're telling somebody the truth, if I call you up on the phone to complain about somebody else, well, David gets upset when I say it this way, but I'm lying. I'm telling you what I think, but my thoughts aren't true. Uh, so it says here, so when you feel resistance, recognize it for what it is. Realize that resistance is a path from me, meaning spirit. And ask yourself which path you would place your feet on now. Then let go of your belief in resistance and let go of your fight against resistance. Give your heart to me. Ask me to help. And let yourself rest as the resistance passes on to nothingness. Then the way is clear for you to forgive and accept the peace of God in joy. Watch your heart when you believe you have forgiven. Be careful that you do not find a grievance or a grudge there. For if you do, your forgiveness is not complete. Now my definition of, re of forgiveness is to give way for a new thought about it. To make way for a new thought. When I You've heard this story, but I'll tell it to you again, because we have guests. And uh, <coughs> I wanted to forgive my father, because I was holding a big grudge. And I didn't know how to do it. And I remember, I went to see a medium after my mother made her transition, and my dad had died many years before. And I didn't know him hardly at all, but he, uh, he was on my mind, because I'd heard so much about him growing up. And so I, uh, I, when I went to see this medium, they all came through. I don't know if it's true or not, but it felt very real. And, that, and they both asked to be forgiven. And I was so enthralled. But by the end of the day, I was kind of annoyed, quite frankly. I thought, with all they put me through, and now they're still asking for something from me. <laughs> and I went to a healer friend of mine. I was on the table, and he's giving me a massage and Reiki and what have you. And I told him the story, and I said, but I know forgiveness is for me, so I'll just do it when I get around to it. And he said, no, forgiveness isn't just for you. It's for them, too. You don't want to hold anybody back because of your grudge, because of your unwillingness to uh, set them and yourself free. And I thought, he's right. I don't. I don't want to hold my dad back from wherever he's moving on in spirit to... Uh, and so that day I became willing to, and the work came, experience forgiveness. So I got in the car and I said, God, I don't know how to do this. But I know you do, because sometimes I personify God when we have a visit. And I, uh, I said, God, I don't know how to do this, but I know you do, so just show me the way. I'm willing. And every time a resentment thought would come up, I'd say, God, I'm willing. Show me the way, because I know that I don't know how to do this but I'm willing to have the experience. And about a year later, Edwin Gaines invited me out to Phoenix for a, uh, an, an International New Thought Alliance intensive, or convention it's called, to a Catherine Ponder cocktail party, of all things, I'm very fancy. And uh, <laughs> so that's where, it, it, this abundance thing started that weekend. I, uh, so much happened that way. But I have two half-brothers that live out there that I had never met before. And so I, my older brothers had met them, so I got their contact, and I reached out to the older of the two. And I said, I'm your brother, Sean. Would you like to meet me? And he said, can't wait. And so I met these two guys, and we look a lot alike. And we, uh, we liked each other a lot. And I found out their life with my dad wasn't better than mine without him. And I, so I had this connection, and then I drove up to where in Sedona, the chapel on the rock, where they said they'd scattered his ashes years before. And I just sat there, and I was praying, and suddenly I had a, like a bolt of lightning go through me. Suddenly, he became Jack Moninger instead of my father, who left me. And I no longer needed the past to be different. I no longer needed him to have not have left. I no longer needed any of my childhood with him or without them, to be different. And I thought, oh, this is what forgiveness is. It's the release of trying to make the past 
change. And I gave, I kept, I continuously, continuously gave way for a new thought about him, myself, and my childhood, and the present moment. Because I was burdened by this unforgiveness. It really weighed me down. It got in the way of living life joyously. And I was promised I could live life joyously. I had a whole fellowship tell me I could live life joyously. And then unity came up and told me I could live life joyously and in divine health. And there were a few things I had to do. I had to tithe and I had to forgive. I had to set goals. I had to find a purpose. And forgiveness was, I was already tithing, so it was forgiveness at that point that was really up for me that was holding me back, or unforgiveness. You know, because we could think we're pretty spiritual until we aren't. <laughs> you know who I'm talking to here. Uh, I'm talking to me, quite frankly. If you think I'm talking to you, then I am. <clears throat> if you think it's you, then it is. And so, to begin to look at this and realize, oh, it, it's my fear that somehow God is not present, not active in this relationship that would lead, keep me in unforgiveness or resisting giving way for a new thought about this. It doesn't happen on my time schedule, but I know it happens. I have proven it repeatedly. I have now done this with uh, friends. I will now call them friends because for a while they didn't seem like friends. And I was not going to have them be my friend until I, I did this prayer again with them. And then I had awakenings and suddenly I reached out and we've had delightful relationships ever since. And so I know it's possible. And when it doesn't seem possible, it's when I resist it. And I don't want my last day to be the day I refuse to experience forgiveness. I don't want this last day of 2017 to be the day that I refuse to give up my resistance to love and forgiveness and well-being. This is the day I declare my willingness to experience forgiveness. Knowing your programs today on your chairs, you have an envelope, a pen, and three sheet and two sheets of paper. Please take the small sheet of paper. Now which size is that? Small. The small sheet. <laughs> this yeah, not everybody has, and I've seen some people still I you see that this is the small sheet. It's not as big as the big sheet. It's about half the size of the big sheet. I may have to. Because somebody's going to come down to the burning bowl with the big sheet and the envelope, and I'm going to say, no, you're wrong. And, I, and it's unforgivable. <laughs> what? We're going to be doing is write, not yet, we're going to be writing down the name of everyone we'd like to be willing to release our thoughts of betrayal about, our thoughts of unpeace. You've got a front and a back. Here's the deal. We're going to pray first. Because putting them on this list, and I suggest to draw a heart next to every single name. Amen. There's not one being that you're going to put on this list that isn't also God's beloved child. Not one. You give them to God, not to hatred. Not to get rid of these people. As if, if you do, they won't show up in disguise of a new person. We don't throw each other away anymore. We release our belief that the circumstances can hurt us as if God is absent. We release the belief. So take a breath here. We're going to pray first. Mm -hmm. 
Let us give thanks now for these angels we're about to place on this paper. We don't have to know how they're angels, except that they did bring us together today to pray, to acknowledge God as our source and our supply, not these beings, that God is our source and our supply. In our giving way for a new thought, about ourselves, about our lives, about God, and about all who have been involved in our lives. In giving way for this new thought, we receive new information from the Comforter, from the Spirit, from our highest voice. And I call upon my highest voice now to speak to me of truth, of wisdom, and to become willing to release and let go my thoughts about all these beings so that I may know the truth and then be set free. After we write our names on these papers, we're going to come downstairs and we're going to release these papers into the fire that our thoughts may be broken up and the truth of these beings may be released into the atmosphere so that we may see ourselves and each other correctly. We're so glad we came here today to be willing to participate in this side by side, brothers and sisters together in a great expression of forgiveness. So it is, and amen. amen. I invite you to put your names down on the small sheet of paper. And when you're ready, meet me downstairs on the sidewalk. Take a breath. Let's give thanks now for what we have been willing to do, to think, to be. We move forward from this process into the next one. We become willing to experience forgiveness today for all things, for all beings, most importantly for ourselves. We become willing to express our gratitude for gr gratitude is the number one healer. There is no state of mind that will heal us faster than gratitude. <clears throat> gratitude connects us mentally, emotionally, and even physically with our source and our supply. We are not trying to get health. We are awake awakening to the love that we are. And so we give thanks. We say amen. I'm going to read one last passage. <clears throat> it comes from Luke, the Holy Spirit's interpretation, and it's chapter 12. And it starts about from verse 22. The Spirit says, Do not worry about your progress on this path, that you travel to healing. To be on the path and aware of the path and thinking of the path is enough. Let me tell you a secret that will make your journey along this path simpler and more joyful. And the secret is this. As you travel this path, you will have only two experiences. How many? Two. Thank you, you're listening. <laughs> it may seem like many, but in truth it is only two. One experience will speed you along your journey in joy, and the other will delay your journey a little while. The secret to a simple and joyful journey is to learn to discern between these two experiences, and then always choose the joyful one. I've spoken to you of both experiences before, so this is but a reminder for you. The only two experiences that you will know as we travel this path together are the experience of your willingness 
and the experience of resistance. Everything that you think you experience is either one or the other. So do not worry about your progress on this path. Do not judge your own thoughts or actions, for worry and judgment do not bring joy, so they cannot be willingness. Discern carefully, my friend. Recognize the thought within your mind, and at every opportunity, choose the strength of your willingness. Seek only for the kingdom, and all things will be given you. Where your heart is, your treasure is also. And it will be helpful if you remember this. God's will is that you be perfectly happy in every moment of eternity. Nancy?